Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment. But a man of understanding walks uprightly. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 21. How many young people have been killed joyriding, doing something that's absolutely stupid and foolish for the thrill of it? There are so many things that we can do. There is a danger associated with them. They are foolishness, but people do them because it's a thrill, it's a joy. Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment. But a man of understanding walks uprightly. My thought immediately turns to one of the fruits of the Spirit. That is self-control. A godly person is a person who is under control. He has the same temptations, the same desires as other people. But he has discernment. He has a sense of what is wise, what is sensible, what is good to do. And he chooses his path accordingly, according to what is right, not just according to what he would like. Because much of the sorrow in the world comes about because people have been seeking a thrill, seeking to do something that is dangerous one way or another. The scriptures give us the basis for discernment. There are many stories of the lives of people in the Bible and these become examples for us. Examples of people doing the right thing and examples of people doing the wrong thing. All actions have consequences. The choice of path you take is sometimes a struggle. The flesh and the spirit at war with one another. The flesh saying, I want to do one thing. The spirit saying, hang on there, that is not a wise thing to do. And the choice remains, and we must make the choice. Do we do the thing that will provide us with a thrill? Or are we content with the things that we are doing? Are we walking in uprightness and goodness, being careful not to hurt others? And that hurting of others may be just the consequence of us doing something silly. There are times when we do need to do dangerous things. And if we are working with discernment, then we will put in place all of the precautions that are necessary to make that safe. So if we go climbing the harbour bridge, then we will put on a harness. If we don't put on a harness, then we will make the exercise very short and do it with great concentration. The danger of falling off roofs is because people spend a lot of time up on the roof and they can easily be distracted and lose concentration. Or, of course, they might slip because they're not being very careful about their movements. That's one kind of choice that people make. So, when you are doing something dangerous, people will say, Be careful! occupational health and safety wisdom says analyze the risks beforehand consider safer alternatives precautions and if you're going to spend any significant time on the roof then you make sure that you are safe in doing so a man of understanding walks uprightly he considers his way he counts the cost and he minimizes the risks by one means or another. The foolish man, though, just dives straight in. He doesn't test the waters first and discover the submerged log or the submerged rock, dives in and cracks his skull. Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment. There's a suggestion here that we have a pattern in the way that that we deal with the circumstances of life. It is a pattern of life to be destitute of discernment. And it is a pattern of life to be a person of understanding, a person who thinks carefully about the choices that he makes and researches the options. I've spoken initially just in physical things like joyriding. 
or work situations, which can be dangerous. But the principles apply in relationships, with respect to money. Everything in our life has consequences to it. Major causes of death and disability in our society are because of poor choices. You're driving and you realise that you're getting tired, but you say, oh, I'll just go another 10 kilometres. I'm almost home and never make it. You go out with friends and start drinking and don't keep track of what you're drinking. And that leads whether to a brawl or to glassing or to violence or, or a punch. Whatever happens, people end up dead, people end up disfigured, people end up with families destroyed because of choices that people make. The scripture says, choose life. Why will you die? God doesn't want to see us in distress. And that's why the Proverbs and the scriptures generally declare that a person who walks in righteousness will live longer and be more satisfied with life. Now, there's no guarantee that we're going to live 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years. But there is a guarantee that our life will be shortened if we make bad choices, if we don't take care about the path that we take. And it only takes a moment of distraction to make a bad choice that can permanently shorten your life. That's why the emphasis in the New Testament is walk by faith, walk in obedience to the Lord. Why do you call me Lord and not do the things that I say? why we should walk by the Spirit and not fulfil the lusts of the flesh. For the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life are not of the Father. They are of this world and you cannot love God and this world. You must make a choice. The upright person, the righteous person, walks according to the way of the Lord, the way of the Lord Jesus on his journey to the Father. Sometimes that way will be difficult. There will be challenges. There will be hard choices to make because pressure will be on us to do one thing but righteousness determines that we shall do something else and we must make the choice to do that which is right. Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment. The rule for making a choice is not do I like it or not? The rule is, is it right? Is it a blessing to others? Is it a, an act of service? Is it something that will glorify God? Or is it all about me? The man of understanding who walks uprightly will be not living to please himself, but to please his master. Folly is joy to him who is destitute of discernment, but a man of understanding walks uprightly. The joy that really counts is not the instantaneous gratification of a thrill, but the joy that is set before us in the Father's house. And so Paul's exhortation to the Philippians was rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. The way of the upright does not avoid joy it's just that it doesn't seek joy, it seeks God and finds joy. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. When we walk by the Spirit, then we will have joy in our hearts, even though our circumstances might be hard. We're told in Hebrews 12 that for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. So God's people are not without joy, but they walk uprightly and experience the joy of the Lord. They rejoice in their God, and that is the source of their satisfaction and peace and happiness is not found in outrageous behaviour, risky behaviour, momentary thrills. It is found in the Lord.